For more than three centuries, Americans have built their own guns. And now it's more popular than ever. Today, three builders race the clock and each other. They face a mission-specific box of parts and a series of challenges. The winner earns bragging rights, prizes, and takes home a gun. This is BuildBox. The last episode of BuildBox Season 1. And it's been a fun one, guys. And we started this show because we wanted to really highlight the skills out there because building people building their own guns is so popular. Why is that, Chris? Uh, honestly, everybody wants to do stuff and be proficient at it. And people that enjoy firearms as a hobby want to see it also. Yeah. I mean, enough cooking. Let's build <laughs> some guns. It's another way that people enjoy uh, and experience owning guns. Um, KJ, we also wanted to show people that this is possible and not that hard. And we, we gave these guys three hours. <laughs> we, gave them, we gave them three hours and who knew that'd be such a time crunch. <laughs> yes. But once you start the clock, they started sweating. The clock changes everything. It's a, it's a major, major impact. Two hours left, Jimmy. No problem. No problem. I want to build two. <laughs> Dual wielding. <laughs> I know I can build a gun really fast. I'm not really worried about that. He's washed up. Going to paint. Good luck. Yeah, I need it. Best of luck. I hope it dries in time. You're running out of time. I might have uh, mismanaged my time. Builders, you have one hour remaining. Maybe I'm not moving fast enough. 45 minutes. Everybody's moving a little bit faster now. They thought. You heard it. You heard it. This is plenty of time. Jimmy said, I'm going to build two. Yeah. And now he's going, he might get one. He's, he's starting to sweat a little bit. <laughs> he, was, he was cool earlier, but I don't know, man. We'll see. Threw it in, wasn't paying attention, got it crammed in there, looking at the clock, ran that slide on there. And when I did, it stuck. I noticed it was a 17. Not the first time I'm a gunsmith by nature, not the first time I had a Glock slide on. And normally you just re uh, rack that slide to the rear, drop the back cover plate, pull out the safety, pull out the striker, and that comes right off. Didn't happen this time. First I racked it on the table a couple times, wasn't coming off. So I grabbed the mallet, and boy did I hit that. Builders, you have 30 minutes left. We're almost down to 30 minutes. I don't think I'm gonna get my build done in time. I could not find one of the pins for my gas block. And I and my heart just sank immediately. And I thought, I'm not gonna be able to finish a rifle. Oh, look at this. Inside the bag. All right, take a separate yeah. container. Yep. I thought I was gonna have time to do two of them. You running out of time down there, Jimmy? Oh man, I am. <laughs> So when I went out there with two minutes left, I knew if it didn't fire that my, uh, and it did fire. So that's the only thing that. Uh, We've never had somebody not in the studio with 30 seconds to go. That's awesome. We are coming in last 30, 30 seconds. He strolls in 15. with 15 seconds left. That's how he rolls. 10. That, you know, I, I'm still not confident at all. Five, four, Three, two, one. Hands up, you're done. Mine's not ejecting at all. Yeah, yours is not extracting. Did you oil it? Yes. I don't think you're getting any gas. Lubed up my gun more and slapped it together, so hopefully it works now. The front of that barrel, Get remember the space you yourself. needed? Remember the space? Yep. Do you have that space? No. Get, all right, that's your problem. You're not getting enough gas. 30 seconds. Three hours went way faster than it usually does at work. <laughs> it just blew by. <laughs> Five seconds. And time. Hands up. You are done. I basically got the idiot's guide to gunsmithing five seconds at a time from these two. <laughs> so thanks for that. I wasn't expecting that at all. 
I don't think helping Bradley caused me to make any of my own mistakes. I don't care how long you've been doing this, what your experience level is, whether you're the, a novice in your garage or if you've been doing this 25 years, when that clock starts, nothing matters, everybody's equal. Build Box, brought to you by Aero Precision, Blue Force Gear, Real Avid, Brownells, and Hollow Sun. Oh, if Gibb wasn't there, I wouldn't have a rifle. KJ, we had builders of a lot of different skill levels on the show, from I've built a couple guns to guys who've literally done hundreds because they do it for a living. Some of these guys needed help. A lot of them needed help, it seemed like, um, but we couldn't give them. As judges, as hosts, we couldn't give them that help that they really kind of needed. And we really saw that in, uh, in the, I think it was the three gun episode, is Gib always helping Bradley. Um, and it was frustrating from this side because we saw what it was doing to Gib's build. Eh, I don't think I'm gonna get some of the decorations on I wanted, but I'll have a functioning rifle. Bradley is a super nice guy. ARs are not 100% his thing. If I still have some exposed threads inside the lower receiver after screwing in my buffer tube, just so I can make sure it's lined up, is that, let me see what you does, got. Does that look right? Okay, it's captured, you're done. Yep, it's captured. I mean, most of his questions are fairly simple, quick and easy to answer. I didn't mind taking time out to do it. The other contestants were a huge help. And uh, you know everybody was kind of helping each other out. Where's your a wide window for foot pounds? Yeah. Here's the first right. thing. Let's get in there with some light. Now we have basically three builders helping one builder. No. I don't want anybody to fail in this. I want everybody to make a, a functioning rifle, whether it's the best one ever. It's probably right on, but I would get the barrel on, get it tight and get that hole lined up as long as you can look down that hole and see it inside there, the worst you gotta do is just get that tube to fit through. It's just the right thing to do. I don't feel good about letting people fall on their face. Everybody needs a friend like Gib. I tell you what, Gib, can you come to my house and show me how to build guns? <laughs> <laughs> and a couple quick things, they're a help. Is this the right pen? Oh gosh. I don't think it is. No. It looks a little big. No, no, no. But we drove a pen did out you of get, it. Did you get this pen in? No. That's the pen you need in. If you oh. want your gas tube to stay in place, it's about a quarter inch long. It's very, very tiny. The bag this came in has got it in it. Okay. Look at the end of it. We want them to function. You don't want to see anybody just, you know, if they're having issues. The same as when I asked Zach, you know, hey man, I need, I need a, an opinion on something. I got a pin stuck over here. You wanna help me get this pin out? What's going on? Dude, I got stuck in there. Did you loosen what? this, the screws? Did you tighten these already? No, I did not. Okay, Ursula got a pin, trigger pin stuck, where she couldn't get it out. So she's trying to back out the pin when she asks for help. The easiest way to do that is because the trigger was tilted a little bit with the pin, uh, she couldn't knock it out correctly. So all you have to do is pull the actual hammer back. So it relieves that pressure and lines it up again. And then you just tap out the pin. Where's your punch? What? Right Where's there? the punch you're using? That was the punch I was using. Let's try to get that out. Yeah. This one's thin enough. You're good. The hell? What'd you do? Don't worry about it. No, it's, <laughs> tell me so I know for future reference. Hammer. You cock huh? the hammer, it releases that tension. That tension on it? Yep. I knew I was possibly in trouble because Zach's gun ran. Our final one. This is Gibbs. What concerns me is it doesn't go in the battery. It wasn't good. My experience was disappointing, to say the least. It's not going into battery. Damn it. When it got to Gibbs, that's when everyone was like, oh, this isn't good. When Chris just popped his scope off, I'm, I'm pretty certain I have no memory of tightening my 
my nuts down on the scope mount. I don't like seeing that my competitors' rifles didn't function quite as well. So I think helping Bradley with his stuff, now that I look back, was probably far more of a distraction than I really realized. Sometimes out of chaos comes genius. So I don't know if I'd call my rifle genius, but it shoots. <laughs>I was shaky, I was nervous, just everybody around watching, and I had to go first. So Chris, we invited these competitors on. They knew they were gonna be doing a gun build mm -hmm. competition show, but right off the bat, we made them shoot guns. Yeah, we didn't tell anybody they were gonna have to shoot, and uh, so, I mean, I remember the very first one when I walked out and said something, and, and it was like, hey, you know, we're gonna draw straws for the shooting, and they're like, we're shooting? Shoot, we're shooting? We're shooting? We're <laughs> shooting? <laughs> well, everybody says they want to be on Top Shot. They're like, oh, I would have loved to do that. I would love to be on one of those shooting shows. And then when they get out there, they realize it's not that easy. Mm -mm. Is that the fall off? Nope. Good hit. Throw two rounds in the mag, get back on target. Only loads two with confidence. Go for the trigger again, it's still dead. What is going on? Crack it. I'm like, I'm hoping the rest of this goes a little bit better than that did. I did not know we were doing a shooting portion, and I was like, ah, damn. Press that trigger. One. Press that trigger. Now get those other two. Press that trigger. Now your bullseye. Now your bullseye. Put one round on a bullseye target, which I completely missed. The range challenges were fun. I mean, it was a chance for the competitors to have to go out and shoot guns. It did take them out of the build for a few minutes, um, so they lost a little bit of time, but some of them kind of enjoyed doing it. Every time they got out there, nobody was in a hurry, everybody had fun, mm -hmm. and man, it, it even blew me away. I'm gonna throw a flag. Whoa, oh, man. Really? builders, stop building. Get it. There is a flag hey. on the play. Hit, hit, a high. I have so much on my mind right now, and I cannot believe I'm missing these targets. Hi. Breeze. Hey! Gib, you gotta shoot the range challenge. You better get going. I threw the flag at Gib because he was, he was moving along pretty good, and he already had one advantage, so I decided to go ahead and pull a little of that advantage away. All right, man, you got nine targets. Dust them. Woo! Go, Drowning, get out of here! When Zach threw the timeout challenge at me, I was pretty psyched, even though I was not ready for it. And of course, they put the challenge about as far as away as you can get here. So I'm running out there as fast as I can. First of all, I hate running, but you're on the clock, right? So I run out there and I see Chris with at least a semi-auto instead of a revolver this time. So I was really happy. I had a SIG 22 with a red dot on there. I cut out and ran to the shooting challenge because I'm like, you know what? I need as much time as possible because- Clock's because going, I'm, clock's going. I'm not a competitive shooter. I get almost all the way out there and no eyes and ears. Chris is like, dude, ears. Ah, oh, what's going on, man? Hey. What'd you forget? <laughs>
these. Oh. <laughs> Look, my running was not nearly as fast all the way back out there for the second time. It wasn't too hard of a challenge. It was fun. You know, that's the name of the game here. <laughs> He's breathing hard. Are you acting like you're out of breath? Or did they actually make you out of breath? No, breath's gone. I'm like, oh, okay, now we gotta go do this. Ran outside, went and did the shooting challenge. Two or three of the uh, groups of targets, you know, they were paired up. Two or three of them, I shot the first one and it knocked the second one off anyway. So that, that actually worked out pretty good, saved me some time. But it was a, uh, it was fun. Build Box brought to you by Lone Wolf Arms, Double Star, Ballistic Advantage, Wheeler Tools, and Timney Triggers. Okay. So uh, two blind mice redeem this card during the build and your competition will be blindfolded for five minutes. Can I have bourbon? The mystery advantage. This was a fun one, guys. I mean, we had a bunch of different mystery advantages on the show. Favorite ones? Oh, for me, it was probably Judgment Day. Judgment Day, really? you got to help people out. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I think the people that really needed it got it. All right, I'm gonna use my mystery advantage. Is. All right, so the lap face, you know, the face of this thing is super skinny compared to what I'm kind of used to. So I'm just having a little trouble judging if I've got a nice even surface going right here, right now. It's hard to see. I, it looks like it's probably pretty good. It looks and feels really good. I would probably, you're using 220 right now? Yeah, so I'm probably, if I, if, if we yeah, both see, if we both see metal there, but this is the area where it's it was. It's a little dark spot right here. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay. I was able to get a second set of eyes on there to really get it. Plus he was able to help me lap it in. The gun is absolutely silky smooth inside right now. It's everything I was hoping I would get out of lapping it. Good thing we picked Fuzzy Bandit for the pistol build because a pistol is very small and when your hands are handcuffed, it keeps everything close. If you had to work on a big rifle or something where you had to hold things and get your hands apart. Maybe we should have switched it though. <laughs> maybe we, that maybe that would have been funnier. No, but, but, but to see- hard enough. But, but to see Joe grab his trash can and start throwing in stuff. Yes, <laughs> that to carry everything good. out. Jimmy kind of lucked out because he was handcuffed, but really he was just doing stippling. As far as like the uh, the challenges, you know, I tried to do it whenever they were like right in the middle of something tedious. I hope you two are confident in your amount of time left because this says to redeem it at any time and handcuff your opponents for five minutes. Wait, what? Handcuffs, so here's something that y'all don't know that I'm gonna tell you. I am extremely claustrophobic. Handcuffs scare me, they terrify me. We should have got Sereno to do this, he was a cop. I think that he chose the wrong time to use his challenge. And he is sitting there working patiently. Can't hold the flashlight when your hands are cuffed. The most challenging part of having the handcuffs was trying to run the torch. The handcuffs didn't allow my hands to get far enough away to keep me from lighting myself or the handcuffs on fire, so I just kind of had to set it down and use the, the heat gun. I think Master of Puppets was the best. Oh, that was the funniest no, one, I think. That it was tough. It was frustrating. Yeah, it was stupid. It was I did tough. not like it, and I know <laughs> there are people that agree with me. KJ, it looks like you're helping a lot, bud. I was tongue-tied and laughing and pissy all at the same time. Why did I choose this? Love you. It's okay. Just everybody be calm. One minute to go with your dummy. Kind of nice not being, you know, him not being able to talk. That is nice. KJ, uh, I wasn't, I think he was trying to help me. I just wasn't getting the cues and he's bouncing all over the place. He's like a hyperthyroid cat. You have been a big help. But I am not directing properly, so. Two blind mice, Mark changing out the cheek stock 
And then Jacob, Jake Welch was uh, aligning his optic. He was getting the... If he had only put the scope base on the correct way, <laughs> he would have gotten it done even better. I'm trying to flex with this thing. Mark, so. I don't think you're going to need your readers. I only thought I was blindfolded. But even if Jake was blindfolded, I don't know what he was doing because I was blindfolded. Jake continued to mount his optic or something. Can I go <laughs> test fire like this? I'm pretty sure that is a Torx that you're screwing with there. So it, you, it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it is. It is. It's not for this. I couldn't find the one that was it's for It's a this. Torx, not the Torx? It, exactly. I, I, but it's working. <laughs> I, I'm just glad when they did the blind thing that it was, I was in the middle of putting a trigger group in or something. Where did I put that? Oh, yeah, down here. I wanted to change the Luth MBA1 stock with the cheek rise from black to tan. Mark, that's looking good. A little bit more to your left. There you go. There you go. Now you're getting it. <laughs> oh, yes. Like that. Here. Here. Warmer. Warmer. Almost. A little bit to the left. There you go. That was like the best part of the whole show was like blindfold, putting the tan, your cheek rise around it. And yeah, that was good. Yeah, good on them. That was awesome. We're just really frankly glad that this season didn't kill us, right? There were a lot of logistics, guys, with competitors and builds and parts. If you liked the show, if you think, well, I could do that, I could do a better job, reach out to us, info at guntalk.com. If you have ideas for the show, if you'd like to be on the show, we are planning to do a season two, and we really appreciate you guys watching this season of Build Box. Want to build the guns you saw on the show or something like it? Go to buildboxTV.com where we have all the links for the parts and tools you'll need.